So today, we're going to be talking with my friend Eliza from Handpicked Aquatics, one of my all-time go-to favourite people for nano fish. Yeah, so, okay, so we'll start over here then. So what are these ones here? They are the Santa Maria endlers, and you see the dominant male down there. Oh yeah, they're a nice colour. So yeah, with endlers, it's all about the males. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, the females are a bit like just a plain guppy. Yes. So what are these ones here? Um, they're just a black bar endler. But they're really pretty nice fluoro colours yeah. on them. And you line, try and line breathe these? I do, yeah. There's a, a tank over here where my weak holes go into when they're not quite right um, to live out their best life. And then we got here, what are these ones here? Japan blue, I think, with a liar tail. Oh, those males are great. Yeah. So how long did it take you to build up this collection of um, endlers? Oh, it's probably about two years, uh, but plenty of food. Um, you do end up with some snails along the way because with lots of feeding. Yep. I mean, snails kind of work in your favour here to keep the tanks nice and fresh. Yes, absolutely. We'll just move on to these ones. These ones are catching my eye. So these are gold tigers? Yeah, yep. They're a fantastic line. Um, a really beautiful one when yeah. you get through. This one here. Um... Oh, yeah, I've never seen these. Yeah, they got like a leopard pattern, but like blue star. Yeah, yeah. Do you remember the name? Campero 31, mm, I have to double check. It's like a proper like Yes, line. it's a proper line, absolutely. If you want it, this yeah, one yeah. here is gorgeous. I probably need a light. No, I'm picking them up okay. Okay, so they're a, a wild, wild tide orchid guppy. So they're like a dwarf guppy. Yep. Um, but really pretty colours. So these aren't... Um, they're not an antler. No. They're a guppy. Yeah, they're a dwarf guppy. Um, dwarf blue guppies? Yep. Panda blue? Panda, yep, yep, that's them. Mine aren't breeding true anymore. No? No. But these look really good. And what are these ones up here? Um, they're a blue. Opal? No, they are a blue guppy again. Um, I think they're a yellow chest uh, blue endless, sorry. Yep. Yep. Blondes? Oh, no. Um, no, these are a orange spot. Um, they're a wild type as well. Wow, look at they're coming so nice. And they're so pretty. Which one do you reckon is your most popular? The most popular is probably this one down here. Which is? Um, which is a green cobra. Ooh, well that's probably why it's got a cool name. Hey, are these the starter star soldier? Yeah, yeah. It's... Oh, they're, they're getting any babies yet? No. Oh, it's a shame. That there though is really lovely. That's a gingaruba, I think that's how you pronounce it. Uh, and I've got a couple of tiny fry, um, but hopefully we'll get some more again soon. What else? Did we miss any? No, yeah, that's just a cull tank. So These all the, the ones, they're all the culls. The, the colours that aren't quite right. Um, same with the shrimp. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, there's shrimp down here. And then... Oh, these are beautiful. Are uh, the El Tig... Uh, is that how you pronounce it? El Tigre? Tig oh, yeah, you're asking the wrong person. But, yep. um, yeah, they still look cool. They are, they're again a wild type in love. Yeah, there's a nice one at the back there. Yeah, nice. And now they're cool. Yeah. I definitely think the other one's my favourite, but. Yeah, uh, these ones? Yeah. yeah they're really <laughs> just, pretty. It's, I don't know, I think it's like once you've seen so many things, you want to see something different. Yes. Yep. So, like, yeah, and then that's obviously like ticking all the boxes. Yeah. yeah look at that, there's the tigers there. Um, the cobra. The cobras, whatever. Yeah. yeah. They look so cool. They're super pretty. So, well, how long have you done endless for? Forever? Um, probably about three years. Three years. Yeah, since I've been able to move into this fish room and gradually expand my space and you know get more tanks. Yeah. To be able to keep more things. Yep. Yep. So, what's this side used for? Uh, this here eventually will be all for shrimp. Yeah. But currently, it's holding a lot of fish that are going to eventually move through to. Um, my new area that I'm going, I'm planning. Oh, these guys are here sparring. Ooh, yeah. That's cool. What are they? Uh, they're your rummy nose raspberries or your um, suaba barbs, I think. 
I have no clue what that means. I've never even seen these, but they're... Uh, rummy really... nose ra rasboras, but they're a type of barb. Rummy nose rasbora, but they're a barb. Yeah, yeah. That's just cool. to... <laughs> Look at them, they're going nuts. Aren't they gorgeous? So, we've just turned the lights on, so these are obviously morning spawners or something? I, I, maybe, I've not yet spawned them. I've only recently added some females, which are a little bit small, so... Sure. Hopefully, um, yeah, hopefully I can in the future. That'd be awesome. They're so, so they're a barb, but they're called rasboras? Yes. Or... <laughs> rummy nose ras they're known as rummy nose rasboras, but they're a type of barb. So, these, what are these called? Uh, they're a black data tetra. Oh, I see them at the back, yeah. Yeah, and the, the males get this really long, um, really magnificent uh, dorsal fin, um, and they act probably a bit more like a, um, like a cichlid. Um, and in the way they breed as well. Yeah, so how do they breed? Um, in caves. Um, Tetra that breeds in caves. Yeah, yeah, so it's certainly a, a fun project for the future. Um, people have spawned them in captivity, so that these ones were wild caught, but I'll see how I go in the future. So you haven't spawned these yet? No, I've only just got them a few months back, so just conditioning them and growing them out, they've probably doubled in size since I've had them. Where are they from? Somewhere in uh, the Amazon, but... The most, Amazonian? Yeah. They look like... Um, that one up there is really pretty. Yeah, he's nice. Or she? That one's a girl? That's a he. You That's a see, he? Yeah, by the, the big um, dorsal fin at the top, and then the, the girls are a little bit smaller. So they're like, obviously, like the black water tank? Yes, yep. yeah. Low pH, black water, and it brings out a really nice iridescence on their yeah. scales. Um, in here is a bit of a, a mix. These... These are sought after. The yeah, so <laughs> I've last year I spawned absolutely hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of the green rasboras, and this year I haven't had much luck. Um, so I've just started conditioning these guys up. They're quite young still, um, starting with a new group and see how I go. Okay, I, I'm sure there's like little breeder secrets and all that stuff, but I want to help them. <laughs> the people out who are watching this because I think like the more people who can breed them the better because like oh, yeah, it's a cool gorgeous. fish. What, how are you breeding them? Um, they're an egg scattering fish. Yeah. Uh, so um, soft water, let them just like a CPD or an emerald, uh, dwarf emerald rasbora, they'll scatter their eggs. Like so you'd set up like a container? Yep. And the they'd con spawn in that? They'll spawn in that. Um, I find the eggs, like, they're very, very tiny. Uh, okay. So you, you often just have to trust that you've got eggs. You can't even, like, see uh, them? I can only see them when they're fungus. Uh, okay. <laughs> so maybe with a magnifying glass, or maybe I need glasses. Uh, but they're really tiny. So what are these other ones here? Yeah, so they're a blue rasbora, or the Herbo axelrodi rasbora. Yeah, Herbo axelrodi is whatever, yeah. yeah. Um, and again, they, they really like a, a black tank. I've not spawned them before. They're meant to be really difficult. I've tried a few got times. Um, I think I've got two males and three females in there. Um, they're, they're really cool though. They are super, super cool. And they probably look better in a bit of a black, more of a black water tank. But, For sure. Um, they are, they're really lovely. And then tons of blue shrimp. Tons of blue shrimp. These would sell well for you. They do, yeah. Uh, especially yeah, especially over over winter, people tend to yeah do their Shrimp fish up. yeah do fish inside, and um, in summer everyone goes back out. Nice. All right. Oh, check his posing for you. Oh yeah. Thank you. Look at him. That's a cool fish. So cool. What are down here? Um. So in. I have to sneak in here. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe we'll need to... What's in here? In here should be um, exclamation point rasboras. I've just gotten these a few weeks back. Oh, they're cool. They are cool. So, um, yeah, love to breed those in the future. Yeah. They're cool. Yeah, you see what they call exclamation point? Yeah. Imagine the first guy who collected those. <laughs> yeah. Just your chili rasboras in there. Ooh, yeah, I love these. Yeah. I really love these. Have you bred these? No, I haven't. I would gotta... absolutely love to. Yeah, just doing Surely more research. Surely you can do it. Uh, it's all research, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Wow. They are super pretty, though. 
Uh, people have done it. Sure. Yeah, no, people have done it. Um, so from what I can tell, um, they you need to have some wood in, and this is probably where I've gone wrong, and possibly wrong with some of the other fish now I think about it as well, but um, they need to have, the, the fry need to have access to wood, um, and they eat off the biofilm off the wood, is apparently. Um, so wow. that's, that's something I'm going to try. Yeah, because it's all that's about trying That's awesome. Yeah. Cool. I keep crawling along down here. Yeah. Um, so. Are these your Dario's? Yeah. Yeah. So okay. here looks like we've got none. Yeah. Um, and then. I really want to get some of these from you. Uh, we can do that. We can organise that. Oh, there's a cool one. That's a female there. Yeah. And there's. Uh, They're some. terrible jumpers, aren't these? Um, I don't find them super jumpy. I do find them quite shy. Sure. Um, and they, yeah, they. they uh, Ooh. Quite, aren't oh, they okay. them all. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, th they are quite shy. Uh, they're an egg scattering fish. Um, I, I don't think they're particularly difficult to, to raise, um, but they do need live food. So that's probably where, for a lot of people, that's where it falls down. That's a struggle. So do they yeah. eat brine shrimp? Yes, love brine shrimp. Okay, so brine shrimp, brindle worms, um, micro worms. That's not impossible then. I mean, if you're oh, a committed fish keeper. Yeah. Super easy. Um, you just got to know that they've got to have um, live food. Um, What's happening down here? Not a lot. There is a pair of apistos, but they don't like people. Yeah, that's so, fine. So, um, yeah, you don't see a lot. Um, what kind? Panduro. Oh yeah, no, yeah. yeah. The, the, the females are the yellow with like bumblebee, and I've they're so them, pretty. But they're, they're, Impossibly aggressive. Like, oh really? Yeah. For oh, me. I find them so shy. Um, wow. Yeah, and then the I think they're called Mete Tetras, and they're meant to be like purple, but they're more like a, a bluey yeah. sort of colour. Sure. No, they're cool. Yeah. Nice. And then what's this one? Uh, in here, we've got a whole heap of lampi killifish, which are currently are they hiding. popular for you? Um, yeah, they are. Um, again, just an egg scattering fish. Um, they, They're when, like a blue eye, kind of. Yeah, yeah, crazy, that beautiful um, luminescent blue eye, um, and they're like an olivey body. Just a, just a pretty little um, nano no. fish, yeah. And like, that's full size back there. Yeah, they're, they're it just cool. disturbs it all, but yeah, it just and like you can see their eyes from across the room. Yeah, they're really, really pretty. Nice. And then we'll see. Uh, just some yellow shrimp. Um, yeah, just oh, some. We'll just. The yellow shrimp. Yeah. <laughs> it's too crowded in here. Yeah. Um, I do have some. <laughs> oh, um, I missed these. Yeah. Just on the bottom there, uh, which I've only recently gotten, which I'm going to get some more of, which are the um, mascara barbs. Oh, I see them. Yep. Yeah. So they've got a, a bit to go out before I can do anything with them. Sure. And that's max size, eh? I think they're going to get a bit bigger. Yeah, they're pretty big. Yeah, they, they're probably they're probably going to be one of the bigger fish that I try and breed. That's cool. I actually think they might be the biggest fish that I want to breed. Yeah. 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 And they're not big. They're big. <laughs> <laughs> cool. You've honestly done a really good job to fit a lot in a small space. Yes. So. And I think in the room that. The most important thing that I wanted, one, put lots of things in there, but two is have some workspace. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because it's really easy to put heaps and heaps of tanks in there and the, the, the desire is to fill the room up with tanks because yeah. like more yeah. tanks the better, right? But you actually need space to to do things. To do things and work on projects and you know, pull mops and breed fish and mm. just do stuff. So you, yeah, for people that don't know, you obviously sell fish yes. online. Yep. So um, yeah, so obviously this is like where you're packing your fish. Um, yep, yep, it's where I'm packing my fish. Um, so start Sunday night getting, prepping the fish, getting them ready, um, pulling them from their tanks. Um, and then, yeah, Monday morning, bright and early, package them all up. Yep. Um, yeah, and send them and out. Out to the direct to consumer. Yeah. It's cool, so yeah, you got all your foods here. Yep. So what, which live foods do you have going on here? Okay, so we've got um, vinegar reels. So the cool things about this, this is vinegar reels, but they're done on a um, rolled oats um, mix. And so the, they're the ones coming up the side. So you've got your regular vinegar reels like in a bottle. Yeah, um, like that. Uh, like that. So your 
teeny tiny little worms. Tiny, tiny, tiny. Yep. Uh, but this way it's more of a concentrated mix and it's really easy just to yeah grab them and feed, heaps easy to feed them. And then banana worms? Banana worms, yep. Yep. Uh, what's the difference between banana worms and these micro worms next door? Banana worms are meant to be a little bit smaller. Okay. Not a lot difference. I, I try to alternate um, which one I feed on what day. So depending on the size of the fry, um, hopefully everyone's getting a little bit every other day. So you're feeding, um, obviously you got micro worms, banana worms, vinegar eels. Yep, and then I've got brindle worms. Oh right, wow. Um, which is wait. pretty full on. Yeah. Um, oh, sad. they're lovely. Yeah, it's just a trillion of those. Are they easy for you to culture? Yeah, really, really easy. You just need to start a culture, a bit of dog food, um, and just keep it damp or moist. Um, and you can see, like, in the bottom of the container, I don't know if you see, like, all throughout the bottom of it, and there's, like, they're all just living oh, in the yeah, substrate yeah, there. Yeah, you can see some worms there. Yeah. And then you um, also have Paramecium. Brunch. Oh, you got Paramecium too. Yeah. Wow, I've never seen so much effort put into the live food. Yeah, I think for a lot of the really, really tiny um, egg scattering fish, I think it probably helps. Yeah. Um, it's probably another part of the hobby, just extends out the fun of it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's like you have to make the food for the fish. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and then I've got some white worms in the freeze. Uh, the fridge is up there as well. I used to try and culture all these things. Yeah. And like, I'd always get like microworms getting through them or I could never do it. Like it's like a talent in itself to actually be able to do oh, that. Oh, and it's absolutely trials and tries. Oh, and there's black worms in here as well. Oh, wow. Um, which we can stir them up, but they're all living in the sand there. So do you buy much food or? Um, I do, but I guess I think it's important to have live food with, I try and give all the fish some live food every day. Uh, helps keep the tank clean. I think it's you know good for them as well. Um, and then supplement it with um, yeah other foods. And then we've also got the brine shrimp. So you're doing four brine shrimps? Well, it's really three. Um, one we've got to feed out today so it's really three and kind of ones in rotation okay yeah uh, okay. it helps when other people are feeding the fish room to have the fourth one to make it easier for other people they're yeah, nice yeah. yeah cool RO unit RO unit wow so and then for fry powder yep I gave you some of this early yes so I wanted to talk about this so yep. This is my new food. You've already tried it out. I have. It's excellent. There's yeah. not a fish that doesn't like it. Not, not a single fish? Not a single fish. Okay, Everyone cool. just loves it. <laughs> awesome. So have you been using that to feed fry yet? I've tried it. Yeah, absolutely. And it, it works. Cool. Yeah, it crumbles into like fine dust, which is exactly what you're after. Yeah, yeah. yeah perfect. So what's up in these tanks? Um, we've got some Montezuma slow tails. Is there a light? No. No, I don't okay. have a light on them. Is it? Um, most of the tanks you see that really, really low light plants. Um, is do you like? Is that just because obviously it's easier to not have the lights? I like the vibe of the room as well. Like I like the really warm lights. Um, is it just like? Does it keep it clean too? Because there's no algae. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So uh, I think part of um, yeah feeding a lot of live foods. So there's not as many contaminants in the in the tanks as well. Um, yeah, nice, easy, low light plants. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean you're probably not getting less many... algae. They're on a light schedule, a little bit in the morning, a little bit in the afternoon. They'll come out for some food. Yeah, well, oh, you want to feed them? We can maybe. feed them. All right, let's try yeah. it. So, yeah, it's like a... Yeah, I've got the palette. No, so how do you of, do it? I like it crushed for pretty much everything. I tend to crush okay, it. Okay, right. Um, so, and I'll just sit on the water's surface and... We'll see. see if they come up. If they're thinking about the food, they can see it come down. I think I'm really creeping them out. There we go. Yeah. Okay. All right, so these are more Kmart little baby tanks. They sure are. And what are you doing here? I mean, you've obviously got the fry system. We'll talk about that in a sec. Yep. But what's happening up here? Um, I guess it's uh, part of their grow out process. So they'll start in um, the the fry the fry racks, and when they get a bit bigger, then I'll, I'll move them into the Kmart tanks to size out a little bit more. Yeah. Um, for anyone who's bred fish, you know you need many tanks to. Yeah. You know it's a bit of a process, um, and then when they get big enough, then I'll move them into other tanks to to finish out growing out before I sell them. So the fry go into these little little fry boxes, so this yep. is obviously the Dean 
absolutely. Yep. Yeah. He's like, gonna, this is going to be more famous than him. You know, like yeah. this will forever <laughs> live. On, yeah. <laughs> he's built himself a legacy doing this, honestly. But so, okay. So all your little babies are going here. Yep. And if I'm Next lazy, year. sometimes I'll just put in eggs. If I don't have time to put them aside, I'll just pop in eggs in there and uh, let them raise up. Uh, and then from here, yep. they go into tanks like these. Correct. So I pulled these out last night uh, from a tray. Yeah. And these are the Ficatus. Yeah, so there's a mixture of um, Ficatus and Luminatus, I think, in both Ooh, of these. Oh, they're so pretty. Oh, and you're feeding these the bug buffet? Yeah, I just put some in. Yeah. I didn't notice. Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah, you can see how well it breaks up for them. Yeah, yeah. And then, so, let's go through all these little trays. So, what's in this one? Um, that is... Um, Parva. Parva, yeah. I was cleaning... Oh, look how tiny little babies are. Yeah. But oh my they are much bigger than some of the other fish that I have, so... Yeah, so they're big fry to you. Yeah, they're big fry for me. I can see them, so that's, yeah. you know... <laughs> and then here, lamp eyes? Um, some lamp eye eggs. Um, their eggs take a while to hatch, so... I, I see the eggs down yeah. there. So you keep it really high until they hatch and then you kind of... Drop it back down. Yeah, yeah. cool. Um, so that's just that water movement. Um, I guess Ficardus. there's Ficardus in there. Yeah, they're bigger than the other ones but they're so cool that's so cute it's super cute um, madakas so, yeah a particular type of madakas a, a wild type of madaka wild type yeah what are, what are they called uh, wild type madakas uh, no we, we can show their name later i can't okay. pronounce it but, there but are. i don't know there, there should might just be eggs in there uh -huh. um more neon. Red neon blue eyes. Yeah, um, I don't know if they've hatched though. Um, and same with the delicate or the. Um, yeah, the uh, tenorless. Oh, tenorless, yeah. Um, and then lastly, these ones here are just some long fin white clouds. How long until they're ready to go into a tank? A week? Um, no, I'd probably keep them in there for a few, quite a few more weeks because I, I like the fry boxes because it keeps their food really contained and yeah. so they can eat a lot and you can feed a lot and they can eat a lot and it's really easy to change Do water on them. Do you feed bug buffet like these? Yeah, enough? I'd feed those. Yeah, absolutely. So you can just crush it up. Yeah, just a fine little dust. It, look how fine it is. So yeah. it's perfect for them. Um, so versatile. And as it falls through the water column, you can, yeah. I mean, they're so small, you're not even going to see them eat it, but. Oh, uh, you can see them pretty excited, eh? Yeah. That's cool. And, you know, fry need to eat a lot. Yeah. So having, you know, a little bit sitting there for a while is absolutely fine. Yeah, exactly. I mean, and like, honestly, it's like the kind of thing you would, it's not their main thing. You're going to feed them live foods and all yep. that. So you're just kind of training them here. Yeah. It's like a and it's important that other than the black tire gadaris, everything should eat a variety of foods. And this is obviously made of insect meal. Which is excellent. Yeah. 52% yep. protein. It's everything they Perfect. need. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Are there more babies down here? There are more babies. So these ones are warmer. Um, I keep the two tanks a bit different. Um, wow, look at these little ficatas. So they the they probably could go into a, a, a tank actually. Actually, these probably will eat some of the food. Oh, yeah. Let's try that out. Look at that. Yeah, because it's cool. Because like, I like that it comes in pellet form. I, I, I hate talk to it my own horn, but like I love that it comes in a pellet so you can feed it to like the adults, but then also you can crush it up for the babies. So yep. yeah, instead of like having to buy like first bites and all that. And yeah, I, I found them really, uh, this is really excellent, especially for all the madaka uh, that I feed. Um, Cause then again, you know, from fry all the way through to adults, everyone yeah. enjoys eating it. Nah, that's cool. Cute. And what's down here? Um, something. Yeah, probably... Uh, more neons. More neons, yeah. I might have gone on a bit of a spree there. No, good. I mean, we need them out there. Yeah, they're so pretty. Nice. Okay. And then, up here, we're going through these tanks. Yeah, so we've got some lamp eyes growing out. Oh, uh, yep. Now you can see why they're called lamp eyes. Yeah. Should we feed a little bit to them? Yeah, feed, let's just feed everyone. Yeah, that that'll... All your fish is, there you go, you can see them eating it. Yeah. Well-trained little fish. 
Um, and the best part about the tanks, so we've got shrimp down the bottom, so they'll be happy with all the leftovers. And what's in here? Um, orange shrimp. We've definitely got some orange shrimp. Oh, yeah, Maybe some lamp eyes. Um, and some of the wild type um, madakas, I think. That's cool, yeah, you can see them up the back there. Yeah, and there'll be a ton actually through the... Um, through the horn wart? Yeah, but you're, they're all just probably hiding. Like, you have no clue how much benefit that, that horn wart's doing oh, the hay. Absolutely, and it just grows and grows and grows, so you know it's pulling out all the excess. And you can sell it. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So it's a bonus. Uh, and the shrimp are there keeping it clean. Yeah, the shrimp are so cute. Yeah. Do you worry much like with these tanks, with all your shrimp, do you try and like keep the colours separated or do you just kind of like let them do whatever? Um, I do try and keep the colours separated. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so it's like just a bonus. Yeah. And, and you know, sometimes I've noticed when, you know, I've left um, fry growing out for too long because uh, I don't end up with any shrimplets. Yeah. Uh, and that's a, a good sign that I need to move the fry out because they're probably no longer fry. Are these little Bloody Marys? Yeah. They're great. So what do we have up in these tanks? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, these are bandit sick bullets, yep. which are a little earth eater. Uh, so Do you breed four... these or? No, no, just a display tank. Um, and with those are uh, Phoenix Tetras, which are very, very pretty. So bandit sick bullets, eh? Yeah. Little pet fish. Just pet fish. And then Phoenix Tetras. Yeah. They're pretty cool. They are super cool. Um, when the males spar, they get like red through their tails, oh, yeah. uh, which is really pretty. So this is just like to prove that you also have tanks that you don't breed fish. Oh yeah, absolutely. You've got to enjoy your fish room. Yeah, yeah. that's cool. Sweet, and then what's down here? Cordos. Yeah, so orange fin um, cordos, which definitely need to move on to some new homes, but um, the mum and dad have lost their breeding cave, so, um, yeah, otherwise, and these are all the babies. These are all the babies, so, um, but yeah, uh, you can tell males and females by the the stripe on the back fin, so that's a male with the stripe on that um, tail fin, yep. um, and then female with no stripe. I see it, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, females have no stripe, Yep. and then a male, like that one there, does. Yeah. And then how do you breed them? Just have a cave? Just a cave, um, and they're amazing. So they're from Lake Tanganyika, amazing parents, so really look after their fry, um, and yeah, do well together as well. And then, down here. Ah, oh, this is a okay. bit of a forest. Um, That's cool with all the roots hanging down though. Yeah, so just a heap of uh, different types of rasboras. Let's see if we can get them to come through. but. Um, they're just pretty, and I enjoy, um, you know, standing at the workbench and looking down on them, and um, yeah, watching their they're antics. They're like wild. All right, so we'll get into these tanks, you reckon? Yeah, sure. So these, Ooh, ideally, wow. will hopefully be all breed out, but it doesn't quite work that way. Uh, so we've got two million daisy blue rice fish. Yeah, about two million daisy blue rice fish. Yep. <laughs> How do you breed these? Um, just uh, with a, a mop, pulling the eggs off a mop and um, pop them in the fry, fry tray and yeah. And the males you can tell, they have like all the colour. Yeah, so like oh, there's one down there and they go, the males go dark um, when they're... When they're breeding? When they're breeding, yeah. Do they go alright in cold water or are they only hot? Probably more warm water than... Uh, not super cold, so I wouldn't put them outside in Brisbane um, yeah. over winter. In summer they'd be fine, but um, winter's probably a bit much for them. That's such a cool tank. I love just seeing heaps of fish yeah. in a tank like that. Nice. And then, up, I guess we can go here. Yeah, so this is the, that wild type. Um, Orzia? Orizias? Yeah, so that's... The scientific name yep. for Madaka is this part Curve here. Curve notice. Um, and then the rest of it is, yeah, a bit of Latin. What are they? They're just like a... A, a wild type of Madaka would be yeah. the way to go. But yeah. um, they're, they're a different um, genus than the standard one that we 
um, that we breed. The tip is, or whatever the other one is, yeah, yeah. and he's a curve and otis, yeah. so just a different type of blue eye. Yep, yep. Cool. I guess we'll just do all the top tanks. Pseudomogul Gertrudes, one of my favourites. Yeah, so that's just your standard Cadell, uh, Cadell River. Yeah. Um, it's a Northern Territory. Northern Territory, just Just, just a nice little fish. Next door, these are one of my favourites you've got right now. Oh, they are my favourite. Uh, maybe my second favourite, but they are awesome. Um, the orange Fakatis, and look at those colours, are just phenomenal. These would go so well in a little living room planter tank. Oh, they're so pretty. They look like a marine fish. They, they do, they're just wild, they're so pretty. Full fresh, look excellent. The males look so cool. So how are you breeding these? Just in this mop? Just in the mop, um, same way as, yeah, um, most of the fish, you know, pulling the eggs, let them mature for a little bit and then pop them in a fry tank and you away we go. go. Yeah. Wow. And then, how are you doing so many of these daisy blues? Look at that. So this is just heaps of effort, obviously. Yeah, 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 just Wow. Too much. Cool. Alrighty, we'll work down here. Yeah, so we'll go to that one in the corner first. If oh you yeah, can. yeah, this one. Um, so that is a tank full of the Vietnamese white cloud. Yep. Um, What's yeah. the difference? Finage and need to be kept a little bit warmer. Okay. Yeah. So they, they do look different, um, uh, different fin colours and yeah, need to be kept a bit warmer. Easy to breed? Super easy to breed. Those ones um, do all the work and yeah, I just pull out the fry every so often or sometimes I don't, but um, the fry tend to congregate through the roots of the plants. Mm -hmm. Oh, so you just pull them out of here? Yeah. Oh wow, like just colony breed? Just colony breed, yeah. So that one there's just a grow out for some dwarf emerald rasboras. Oh yeah. Um, they are quite timid, so they always hang out the back. They're so skittish. Super skittish. Really, um... They're pretty though, they're really pretty. They are really pretty. And they're in here with these really pretty shrimp. They are, um, and, and I don't have any baby shrimp, um, so... And yeah, haven't had for some time. Definitely eating all of those. <laughs> they most definitely are. Um, and if we see those ones in here, they're the drape fin barbs, and they're amazing. They should be incredibly popular. They, um, I see the pair. Yeah, so there's a trio in there. Yep. Have you bred these yet? I have. So we've got um, only colony breeding them. Um, so I've just been pulling out fry, and uh, I've got some in here, but they are quite skittish. They'll be hiding. Oh, I can um, imagine. We, yeah. There's a couple of different sizes of them. But... Oh yeah, you see at the back. Yeah. Oh, but beautiful. They're probably the smaller ones. There's some. Um, they're obviously enjoying the flow. Yep. And then here. Um, here they are the yellow white clouds. Um, so a different variety of white cloud again. And you can see that yellow spot um, on them, and the the fins have got a fair amount of yellow through them as well. Um, really pretty, a little bit warmer again than your standard white cloud, but super pretty. They're cool. And just easy, low maintenance, nice for a nano tank. Yeah. Um, planted tank, just something. That's cool. Oh, down here. More of these. Yeah. Are so, these the adults? So this is my original group of um, Daisy's rice fish. So these guys here would be between five and six years old. I've had them for five years. Whoa. Uh, and so this is just their retirement tank. Um, uh, you see poor grandpa, he's not looking too great. <laughs> um, but that's okay, they're five or six years old. He's like um, 90 and fish years. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're pretty ancient. Um, yeah, so they just they just chill and. Uh, hey, they like bug buffet though. So they sure do. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. That's really cool. Yeah, they just. Um, I love that when people still have their original breeders. Yeah. Look at him. There he is, Grandpa, having a bit of food. Yeah, just. Uh, afternoon tea. A bit of afternoon tea, yeah. So um, they're certainly not breeding anymore, but um, yeah. Oh, how can just, you let go of them? Aren't they pretty? Like even the ancient. Look how the, yeah. the colours are actually even nicer. 
Oh gosh, he looks like he needs a walking stick. <laughs> he does. Yeah. But he's still, you know. Oh, he's done well. I mean, there's <laughs> thousands of little mini Daisy Blue Rice fish swimming around because of him. Yeah. So, cool. All right, what's, what else we got down here? Um. Oh. So they are your. They're cool. Yeah. Um. What are they? Your delicate blue eyes, uh, the tenorless. These are tenorless? Yep. You got a lot of females. Yeah, I do get some viable fry, but um, yeah. Down here, uh, just some shrimp. Just some red shrimp, yeah, some cherry shrimp. Big dirty tank. Yeah, it never actually ever gets, like, it's really weird. It doesn't seem to matter how much you change the water, it always stays yeah. like that, but um, the, the sh doesn't seem to harm the shrimp. Um, I do add uh, crushed snails in there pretty often, and the shrimp love crushed snails. As I guess a bit of a live, or it's now dead food for yeah. them, but a uh, fresh food. Um, yeah. And then they pick at the shell as well to get all the excess calcium and stuff off it. So it's They're like a little ecosystem for them. That's cool. And, and then, just some golden white clouds. Oh, just yeah. to, are you gonna? Are you breeding these or? No, just something I enjoy. Just something you love. Yeah. yeah. I think they're pretty and. Uh, there's not many fish that you can pop in a little open top tank, so... Yeah, that look good too. Yeah. Yeah, they're pretty. And we'll work our way over here. Sure. Reckon? So, up on the top I've got my breeders for uh, Luminatus up on that side there. Yeah, they're cool. Uh, they're coming out really nice on my phone. Yeah, they're incredibly pretty. So, how old are these fish? Probably about a year old. Yeah. So, I'm glad I have backup, but they're still going strong with breeding, which is good. Yeah, that's cool. Um, and in there is um, your good tree days, and they're colony spawning. So I've stopped pulling the eggs on there for ages ago, and I'm just getting just fry coming through. So that's so cool. Which is very very cool because there's nowhere for them to hide. Um, they look really good. Yeah, uh, and they, these... both of them really love um, tannin water. So yeah. Blackwater-ish Black sort of, yeah. yeah. And these, well, I mean, yeah, where I've seen them come from, they're like swamp. Yeah. Um, so these are the Cadell River? Yes, they are. I better give you some of the um, Yubinangi Swamp ones I collected. I they're, would love that. Yeah, the they're white gorgeous. fins. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they're cool. Yeah, they got like longer fins, slightly different. Yeah. And um, nice yellow body. Whoa, lots of fish in these. So that's, uh, I guess, the grow out of the Vietnamese white clouds. So I tend to pull them from there yep. um, and pop them in there and just sell from that tank. And then these Chopra Danios, eh? Yeah, so it's a bit of a holding tank uh, on my list to do. Um, it's got breeders for Chopra Danios, which I need to breed. Um, long fin um, white clouds, which we've just seen the fry from them. Yep. And uh, just a couple of um, Daisy Blues rice fish because, um, you know, every tank needs those. Yeah, yeah. Down here, more. Oh, we've got to have, got to have our Daisy Blues in here. Uh, yeah, I don't even know how they got here, but um, there is also some uh, Florida flag fish in there as well. There's a trio. I've never seen these in person. Um, so, yeah. That's cool. They are quite cool. I haven't had any fry or any eggs, but I haven't probably really tried just yet. Yeah. I love, yeah, I love this side of the rainbow. Cool. I love these rainbows. These are the sex lineatas, are they? Yeah, they sure are. So I was able to swap with someone the other day for some fish, um, and our exchange was some medakas for, for these, which I think is a really great deal. Have you gotten eggs yet? I haven't tried, so they're about three, four days old um, in my fish room. Yeah. Um, but absolutely, we'll be trying it. Yeah, they're awesome, that goldy they're, colour. Yeah, greeny goldy colour and the bright red pink lips. You know, the story is they're part, from part of New Guinea where like people can't even get to anymore. It's like you'll get like killed if you go, kind of thing. So, like. It's so important to keep them going. Yeah, so like yeah. it's really good that like, because I've got these going as well. But like, yeah, we're not going to get them again, not, not easily, so. No, they're really lovely. Um, Parvas? Parvas hiding at the back there. Oh, they're pretty. They are really pretty, and when they're displaying, they're, they're really lovely. That's so cool. They're just yeah. a nice small size. I think that's why I like both of them. Yeah. They're just small um, rainbows, which, you know, rainbows can get quite chunky. Um, 
And in here, uh, not that you can tell, that there's about 70 Tetras. Huh. Um, I think I put like 50 Ember Tetras and 20 of the Kitty Tetras. Okay. Look at them at the back, they're all hiding. I'm... They are hiding. Uh, and then there is, yeah. A little bloke down here. Yeah. What's that? Um, was this a Nanakara? Yep. Yeah, Nanakara. Whatever it is, Nanakara. Yep. Something like that. It is, yeah, it is, it's a type. These are rather uh, cool though. These are super cool. Yeah. Uh, so they're the split fin Gudeids? Gudeids? Yeah, look at that. And... Babies yet? Um, I've had two lots of babies. Uh, the, the thing, they are a live bearer, but um, they have a really long gestation period, so they say somewhere between 70 to 80 day gestation period, Whoa. which is crazy. Um, and then aren't they born like a weird way? Like, Yeah, so they're, they're born and they have like an umbilical cord. Um, they're really, really small um, groups that are born um, and they look like a full-size guppy by the time they're born. They're, they're like huge. Really? Yeah. Wow. And, uh, and then I find like the, they may not, they're not necessarily pregnant straight away, like where we think of live bearers that, you know, and we just assume that they're always... Um, always pregnant. Always pregnant, but I don't think they are. I think they have a, a pause or a break in between because I can imagine that's... Um, Very strenuous. Yeah, quite stressful, but that one there is most definitely pregnant, but wow. I feel like she's been pregnant forever, so we'll <laughs> see when... So they just randomly, come, you come in one day and there's babies sort of thing? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but they'll they'll get to a size and you're like surely you, you can't get eat, any bigger do they eat the babies oh they're huge their mouth no way they're like a full-size guppy they're just massive and what they give birth to like one or uh like between five and ten really how yeah. do they fit that in there I don't, they'll get massive um wow yeah that's kind of cool um, I'd but they're nice these. cold water uh fish or cooler temperatures which is why they get the bottom tank Oh, well, should we go on to your shellies? Yeah, sure. Let's go look at the shellies. What are these up here? More quarter punctatus? Uh, no, 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 they're uh, calurus. Is that how I pronounce it? Or lampelagus. Yeah, yeah lampelagus calurus. So, again, um, that's the male. Um, and so he's quite big. And then the female's maybe half his size. Um, yeah, but there's two lots of fry in there, and I really hope he's not on more eggs because he's guarding that. Yeah, he's guarding that um, shell. So that was their first spawn um, up the top there. So the female is doing all the work. Yeah, she's looking after them. But they're all shell dwellers are excellent parents. Um, just really interesting to. to but watch. they're slow mostly. They're so slow to grow. Yep. So uh, are these these, really these slow? ones are probably one of the fastest that I've seen. Um, How old are these babies? Mm, three months? Yeah, about three months. I'm a big fan of Ocelatus. Yeah, me too. So in here are blue and they're probably hiding because they're scared of people. Um, they're meant to be the blue variety, uh, which tend to be more blue when they're younger. And it's like a bluish sheen. Like these ones here? Yeah. And they basically uh, just sit in the shells. They do. So I think there might be fry coming up here. I haven't seen any yet, but you can see how they've moved the shells into like a circle yeah. um, and dug out the pit. And so they kind of like hold the, um, and you'll see it in some others as well, where they hold the, the fry in like a, a small area um, so they don't go too far. And they, That's cool. Yeah, they move all the shells to look after them. So these are like cool like living room desktop tank. Yeah, absolutely, and really interesting behaviours, and yeah, they're always kind of got some antics. Yeah, there's someone, they're doing something in this shell. Yeah, they're... Probably got babies. I think they've got babies, because they're like really protective, that one there and that one over there, because they're really kind of holding. That's rather cool. Yeah. What are these ones? Um, so they're the black um, okies or the speciosus. Speciosus, I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, but there's a couple, of that, there's a little fry just there. Oh, wow. Um, and it's really interesting because people always say they're quite aggressive and they are a little bit aggressive but they're not obviously that aggressive because they allow that amount of fry to go around and yeah, they're, they're just you cute. Can still have the moss with them. Yeah. And the Anubius is growing well it seems. So. Yeah, the Anubius does really well in the um, harder water 
and the moss seems to do well and all the fry, you'll see the fry like hiding all throughout the moss. We'll go down here, more Ockies? Uh, yeah, so no, no, these are the... Um, more Lampalagas. Lampalagas um, a penis. Uh, so I've just moved them into this tank and they've started rearranging the shells to suggest that they are going to start breeding, which they hadn't in their other tank. So oh, cool. quite exciting. Um, yeah, that, that male at the back there's, yeah, they're, they're really pretty. Um, I think that's full size, so hopefully um, we'll have some of these ones because I haven't had any fry yet. I'm quite hopeful though. It's a nice one there too. Yeah. Yeah, so are you like gonna continue to really do a lot of these or? Yeah, I, I really enjoy the shell dwellers. I think um, the shell dwellers are really, like I like their behaviors and I enjoy watching them. Um, so they're the gold Ockies, aren't they just gorgeous? Yes. Um, so that old male there, he would be, uh, I he was an adult when I got him. I, I had bought a pair and so he must be about, I have, I've had him for about four years um, and he's still you know, producing fry and looking after the colony. Um, so that most definitely is as big as they get. Uh, but you'll keep doing these? I think so, I enjoy their behavior. Um, I think they're just, they're just interesting. Um, yeah, I guess they're probably my pet fish. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Cause yeah, I think that like commercially, they're probably not viable. No, no, not at all. But, but they're really fun. They're just fun, which yeah. is like the thing. It's like you're like using this to like supplement your hobby as well, yeah, which is absolutely. nice. Like you know, you got your tanks where you're producing heaps of fish. Oh, but and they're fun too because they're different. Yeah. Um, and yeah, they're they're just different. Um, it's a different. They're that's different type of fun. But these are just like pets, yeah, I pets, guess. Yeah. I, I I just enjoy them. That's cool. No, I love these. Yeah. Nice. Oh, should we go to the other side? Yeah, sure. So, firstly, too, yeah. like, are you, yes. what's happening here? Yeah, yeah, sure. So, um, when I'm shipping fish, I have the water aged for at least a week. Okay. Um, so, fresh, you know, fresh tap goes in, dechlorinate with an air stone, mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, have it sit there for a week, and then I kind of rotate between them um, and then throughout the week whenever I'm needing some fresh water I've got this water ready to go um, yeah especially like fry so is it sh shipping water yep oh cool no, that's a great idea um, and yeah salt water to mix up for brine shrimp because um, it's really easy and I have salt water tanks upstairs so I have salt water I love it yeah it's yeah. cool all right we'll go around so this is the new side of your fishery. This is the new side. This is me taking over the, the rest of the... The garage. The rest of the garage, So yeah. I'm guessing it's like probably 35 meters squared garage, sort of. Maybe, It's yeah. not a huge space. It's not a huge space. No. Uh, I think I've, yeah, been able to fit a fair amount in here. And then, so up here we've got more Neo Lempelagus. Yes. The Similis. So these are the Similis. So they're really... They're stripy. Yeah, they're so pretty. Um, they're certainly larger than, you know, the internet says or people do say. Um, the, the males are the really, really large ones. I think there's like some three full-size males in there. And, and then the, um, the females are a bit smaller. Beautiful. I love them. I, yeah, I, I've never really delved into this whole world. Yeah. Now I've just been holding off because otherwise I'll get too many. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> I'm too obsessive, so. I think that's where I have yeah. so many. Um, and ideally, I'll have those four tanks will be yeah. um, shell dwellers as well when, yeah. I, when I get there. And then, uh, what are these ones? Babies. Yeah, there's quite a few babies in there. So, Herkleis, um, Hekui, Hekui, yeah. Whatever this name is. Yeah. For anyone who's interested in. Look at that. Look at the big boy there. Oop. Oh. Okay. <laughs> a bit He's scared. gone. Yeah. Uh, but you can see how like they move all the shells to create like spaces for the, the fry to hang out. Yeah. Uh, and excellent yeah. little parents. Excellent parents. Really so there's a couple of different ages of fry, so there's maybe three or four different ages of fry in here. Uh, you can have a heap of them in a, in a tank. They don't need a, a tall tank, because um, it's all about the, the surface the area. Yep. Yeah. And what's down here? 
Okay, so we've got a different genetics, but um, gold um, okies down there. Yeah. Um, like different genetics, like different a, line? A different line, yeah. So that's same, yeah, different line. So just from uh, a different source. Um, I love these. Okay. They are so pretty. So fun. Um, and then you've got the Maltese. So I've recently moved them. They were in a larger tank and they'd stopped breeding for me. So I've downgraded them in, back to a smaller tank, which is where I had them originally. Yeah. Um, to hopefully we get some fry because um, I think they were just enjoying their, their big tank too much and we weren't getting any fry. So fingers crossed. Fingers crossed we can, yeah. We, had hundreds at different times, just absolutely really prolific in a small tank, and then I thought, I'll put them in a big tank. Yeah. Um, and then they stopped, so yeah. they've gone back to a small tank. And then? Um, and then we've got the Brevis. So these are the Sunspot Brevis, um, and they're, they're quite pretty as well. Yeah, they've got like, looks like, I don't know if you can see it, um, up by their, I guess just behind, oh, when they come back out, just behind their eyes, um, there's like a, a gold spot, uh, and it looks like it, I don't know, like a metallic, like a, a liquid marker, gold. That's amazing. Yeah, there, there's, so that's the sunspot then. Yeah. That, that Like that little metallic gold mark, yeah. yeah. Cool. And that's it. That's it, leaving this side for another day? Yeah. Oh, cool. So what do you, what's the plans then, I guess? So, cause um, I always like, I mean, a lot of the time, everyone who I go to, the they're, they're perfectionists. They want to hold off showing things that aren't perfect. But like, what's the plan? Just so that we know. Yeah, yeah, sure. So um, it will be another two racks of um, fry, uh, fry systems. things, fry systems in here, um, and then using these as um, breeding tanks and holding tanks, and then we'll have other tanks to move them into. Are you, so you're just doing this rack for now? Or? Uh, for? Like are you going, because I thought you were going to do some more over here Oh uh, yeah, well. so over this side we're going to have, um, it'll be, what's that, 12 three foot tanks, 24 two foot tanks through here, uh, and this part here with my rock collection, I haven't quite worked out exactly uh, what's going on yet. That's uh, funny. Wow. But that no. will probably be, have more like um, grow out sort of stuff, because what we want when, is, and same on the other side, you want your fry to be close to access to water so you can easily do lots and lots of water changes yeah. um, to make that whole process easy. Well, thank you very much for letting us come through your room. You're and welcome. Uh, I'm sure people will love the room. So we'll be back for sure. Yeah, for sure. And, uh, I've got a whole new section to start on. Yeah, <laughs> it'll be cool to come back and see it all at least started. Yeah. And um, yeah, no, you've done a really good job here. So thank you so much. You're and, welcome. Uh, yeah, thanks guys for watching the video. Yep. Sweet. Thank you.